The Alawis, also rendered as Alawites Arabic, Lawit Alawiya, Alawiya, are a sect of Gulat branch of Shia Islam, primarily centered in Syria. The eponymously named Alawites Revere Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib, considered the first Imam of the Twelver school. However, they are generally considered to be Gulat by Shia Islam. The group is believed to have been founded by Ibn Nusayr during the 9th century and fully established as a religion. For this reason, Alawites are sometimes called Nusayris Arabic, Ensirit Nusayriya, though the term has come to be used as a pejorative in the modern era. Another name, Ansari, Arabic, Ansarit Ansariya, is believed to be a mistransliteration of Nusayri. Today, Alawites represent 17% of the Syrian population, an increase from 11% in 2010 and are a significant minority in Turkey and northern Lebanon. There is also a population living in the village of Gahar in the Golan Heights. They are often confused with the Alevis of Turkey. Alawites form the dominant religious group on the Syrian coast and towns near the coast which are also inhabited by Sunnis, Christians, and Ismailis. Alawites identify as a separate ethnoreligious group. The Quran is only one of their holy books and texts, and their interpretation thereof has very little in common with the Muslim interpretation but in accordance with the early Batiniya and other Muslim Galat sects. Alawite theology and rituals break from mainstream Islam in several remarkable ways. For one the Alawites drink wine as Ali's transubstantiated essence in their rituals, while other Muslims abstain from alcohol, Alawites are encouraged to drink socially in moderation. Finally, they also believe in reincarnation. Alawites have historically kept their beliefs secret from outsiders and non-initiated Alawites, so rumors about them have arisen. Arabic accounts of their beliefs tend to be partisan either positively or negatively. However, since the early 2000s, Western scholarship on the Alawite religion has made significant advances. At the core of Alawite belief is a divine triad, comprising three aspects of the one God. These aspects, or emanations, appear cyclically in human form throughout history. The establishment of the French Mandate of Syria marked a turning point in Alawi history. It gave the French the power to recruit Syrian civilians into their armed forces for an indefinite period and created exclusive areas for minorities, including an Alawite state. The Alawite state was later dismantled, but the Alawites continued to be a significant part of the Syrian armed forces. Since Hafez al-Assad took power through the 1970 corrective movement, the government has been dominated by a political elite led by the Alawite al-Assad family. During the Islamist uprising in Syria in the 1970s and 1980s, the establishment came under pressure. Even greater pressure has resulted from the Syrian civil war. Etymology <inaudible> <inaudible> In older sources, Alawis are often called Ansaris. According to Samuel Lyde, who lived among the Alawites during the mid-19th century, this was a term they used among themselves. Other sources indicate that Ansari is simply a Western error in the transliteration of Nusayri. However, the term Nusayri had fallen out of currency by the 1920s, as a movement led by intellectuals within the community during the French Mandate sought to replace it with the modern term Alawi. They characterized the older name which implied a separate ethnic and religious identity as an invention of the sex enemies, ostensibly favoring an emphasis on connection with mainstream Islam, particularly the Shia branch. As such, Nusayri is now generally regarded as antiquated, and has even come to have insulting and abusive connotations. The term is frequently employed as hate speech by Sunni fundamentalists fighting against Bashar al-Assad's government in the Syrian civil war, who use its emphasis on Ibn Nusayr in order to insinuate that Alawi beliefs are man-made and not divinely inspired. Recent research has shown that the Alawi appellation was used by the sect's adherents since the 11th century. The following quote from Alkan 2012 illustrates this point. In actual fact, the name Alawi appears as early as in an 11th century Nusayri tract. Moreover, the term Alawi was already used at the beginning of the 20th century. 
In 1903 the Belgian-born Jesuit and Orientalist Henri Lamens visited a certain Haidari Nusseri Sheikh Abdullah in a village near Antakya and mentions that the latter preferred the name Alawi for his people. Lastly, it is interesting to note that in the above mentioned petitions of 1892 and 1909, the Nusairis called themselves the Arab Alawi people, Arab Alevi Ifesi, our Alawi Nusairi people, Ifatuna al Nusairia al Alawiya, or signed with Alawi people, Alevi Ifesi Mzasila. This early self designation is, in my opinion, of triple importance. Firstly, it shows that the word Alawi was always used by these people, as Alawi authors emphasize. Secondly, it hints at the reformation of the New Cyrus, launched by some of their sheikhs in the 19th century and their attempt to be accepted as part of Islam. And thirdly, it challenges the claims that the change of the identity and name from Nusairi to Alawi took place around 1920, in the beginning of the French mandate in Syria. 1919 the Alawites are distinct from the Alevi religious sect in Turkey, although the terms share a common etymology and pronunciation. History Origins <inaudible> 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 The origin of the genetics of Alawites is disputed. Local folklore suggests that they are descendants of the followers of the 11th Imam, Hassan al Askari d. and his pupil, Ibn Nusayr d. During the 19th and 20th centuries, some Western scholars believed that Alawites were descended from ancient Middle Eastern peoples such as the Arameans, Canaanites, Hittites, and Mardet. Many prominent Alawite tribes are also descended from 13th century settlers from Sinjar. In his Natural History, Book V, Pliny the Elder said, The Tetrarchy of the Nazarene refers to the western region, between of the Orontes and the sea, which consists of a small mountain range called an Nusairaya Mountains bordered with a valley running from southeast to northwest known as Al Gab Plain. The region was populated by a portion of Syrians, who were called Nazarene. However, scholars are reluctant to link between Nazarene and Nazarenes. Yet, the term, Nazarene, Nazarinorum, can be possibly connected to words which include the Semitic triliteral root NSR such as the subject Nasser in Eastern Aramaic which means, Keeper of Wellness. Ibn Nusayr and his followers are considered the founders of the sect. After the death of the 11th Imam, al Askari, problems emerged in the Shia community concerning his succession, and then Ibn Nusayr claimed to be the Bab and Ism of the deceased Imam and that he received his secret teachings. Ibn Nusayr and his followers' development seems to be one of many other early Gulat mystical Islamic sects, and were apparently excommunicated by the Shia representatives of the 12th hidden Imam. The Alawi sect later was organized during the Hamdanid dynasty by a follower of Muhammad ibn Nusayr known as al Qasibi, who died in Aleppo about 969 AD, after a rival tea with the sect Ashachia, who claimed also to have the doctrine of ibn Nusayr. In 1032, al Qasibi's grandson and pupil, al Tabarani, moved to Latakia, then controlled by the Byzantine Empire. Al Tabarani influenced the Alawite faith through his writings and by converting the rural population of the Syrian coastal mountain range. According to Bar Hebraeus, many Alawites were killed when the Crusaders initially entered Syria in 1097, however, they tolerated them when they concluded they were not a truly Islamic sect. Two prominent Alawite leaders in the following centuries, credited with uplifting the group, were Sheikhs al Maxin d. 1240 and al Tubani, d. 1300, both originally from Mount Sinjar in modern Iraq. In the 14th century, the Alawites were forced by Mamluk ruler Baibars to build mosques in their settlements, to which they responded with token gestures described by the Muslim traveller Ibn Battuta. During the reign of Selim I, of the Ottoman Empire, the Alawites would again experience significant persecution, especially in Aleppo when a massacre occurred in the Great Mosque of Aleppo on 24 April 1517. The massacre was known as, Massacre of the Talal, Arabic, Majazert Altal in which the corpses of thousands of victims accumulated as a tell located west of the castle. The horrors of the massacre which caused the immigration of the survivors to the coastal region are documented at the National and University Library in Strasbourg. The manuscript is reserved as a letter sent by an Ottoman commander to Sultan Selim I. 
By executing the orders of His Majesty, the decisions and recommendations were implemented, and all the Syrian villages, especially the villages of Nusiris, were destroyed until the jungle of the bridge and the gate of the eagle probably Bab al to Shizar and Wadi Khalid in Akkar district, until the victory was written for us. And the religion of Islam, the Ottoman, of course, settled in the Levant, and these Syrians were left homeless and would not live on the land of the great Sultan Selim. Their remnants have been eaten by the monsters of the mountains and crocodiles of the jungle Al -Gab Plain. Long live our Sultan on soft lands, God bless the right. God curse them in every book, and the light of God perpetuates on you. <laughs> Ottoman Empire The Ottoman Empire oppressed the Alawites, attempting to convert them to Sunni Islam. The Alawis rose up against the Ottomans on several occasions, and maintained their autonomy in their mountains. In his book, Seven Pillars of Wisdom, T. E. Lawrence wrote The sect, vital in itself, was clannish in feeling and politics. One nosary would not betray another, and would hardly not betray an unbeliever. Their villages lay in patches down the main hills to the Tripoli Gap. They spoke Arabic, but had lived there since the beginning of Greek letters in Syria. Usually they stood aside from affairs, and left the Turkish government alone in hope of reciprocity. During the 18th century, the Ottomans employed a number of Alawite leaders as tax collectors under the Altism system. Between 1809 and 1813, Mustafa Aga Barber, the governor of Tripoli, attacked the Kalbia Alawites with marked savagery. Some Alawites supported Ottoman involvement in the Egyptian Ottoman Wars of 1831-1833 and 1839-1841, and had careers in the Ottoman army or as Ottoman governors. By the mid-19th century, the Alawite people, customs, and way of life were described by Samuel Lyde, an English missionary among them, as suffering from nothing except a gloomy plight. Early in the 20th century, the mainly Sunni Ottoman leaders were bankrupt and losing the political power, and the Alawites were poor peasants. Alawites were not allowed to testify in court until after World War I and the dissolution of the Ottoman Empire. <inaudible> French Mandate period After the end of World War I and the fall of the Ottoman Empire, Syria and Lebanon were placed by the League of Nations under the French Mandate for Syria and the Lebanon. On 15 December 1918 Alawite leader Salah al-Ali called for a meeting of Alawite leaders in the town of al-Sheikh Badr, urging them to revolt and expel the French from Syria. When French authorities heard about the meeting, they sent a force to arrest Salah al-Ali. He and his men ambushed and defeated the French forces at al-Sheikh Badr, inflicting more than 35 casualties. After this victory Al-Ali began organizing his Alawite rebels into a disciplined force, with its own general command and military ranks. The Al-Sheikh Badr skirmish began the Syrian revolt of 1919. Al-Ali responded to French attacks by laying siege to and occupying al Kadmus, from which the French had conducted their military operations against him. In November, General Henri Goro mounted a campaign against Salah Al-Ali's forces in the An Nusayariya mountains. His forces entered Al Ali's village of Al Sheikh Badr, arresting many Alawi leaders. However, Al Ali fled to the north. When a large French force overran his positions, he went underground. However, despite these instances of opposition, the Alawites greatly favored French rule and sought its continuation beyond the mandate period. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Alawite state. When the French began to occupy Syria in 1920, an Alawite state was created in the coastal and mountain country comprising most Alawite villages. The French justified this by citing differences between the backwards mountain people and the mainstream Sunnis. The division also intended to protect the Alawite people from more powerful majorities, such as the Sunnis. The French also created microstates, such as Greater Lebanon for the Maronite Christians and Jabal al Druze for the Druze. Aleppo and Damascus were also separate states. Under the mandate many Alawite chieftains supported a separate Alawite nation, and tried to convert their autonomy into independence. The French encouraged Alawites to join their military forces, in part to provide a counterweight to the Sunni majority which was more hostile to their rule. According to a 1935 letter by the French Minister of War, the French considered the Alawites and the Druze the only 
warlike races in the Mandate territories, the region was home to a mostly rural, heterogeneous population. The landowning families and 80% of the population of the port city of Latakia were Sunni Muslim, however, in rural areas 62% of the population were Alawite peasants. There was considerable Alawite separatist sentiment in the region, evidenced by a 1936 letter signed by 80 Alawi leaders addressed to the French Prime Minister which said that the "'Alawite people rejected attachment to Syria and wished to stay under French protection." Among the signatories was Suleiman Ali al-Assad, father of Hafez al-Assad. Even during this time of increased Alawite rights, the situation was still so bad for the group that many women had to leave their homes to work for urban Sunnis. In May 1930, the Alawite state was renamed the government of Latakia in one of the few concessions by the French to Arab nationalists before 1936. Nevertheless, on 3 December 1936 the Alawite state was reincorporated into Syria as a concession by the French to the National Bloc the party in power in the semi-autonomous Syrian government. The law went into effect in 1937. In 1939, the Sanjak of Alexandretta now Hattay, contained a large number of Alawites. The Hattayan land was given to Turkey by the French after a League of Nations plebiscite in the province. This development greatly angered most Syrians. To add to Alawi contempt, in 1938 the Turkish military went into Iskenderun and expelled most of the Arab and Armenian population. Before this, the Alawite Arabs and Armenians comprised most of the province's population. Zaki al Arsuzi, a young Alawite leader from Iskenderun province in the Sanjak of Alexandretta who led the resistance to the province's annexation by the Turks, later became a co founder of the Ba'ath Party with Eastern Orthodox Christian schoolteacher Michel Aflak and Sunni politician Salah ad Din al Bitar. After World War II, Suleiman al Murshid played a major role in uniting the Alawite province with Syria. He was executed by the Syrian government in Damascus on 12 December 1946, only three days after a political trial. After Syrian independence Syria became independent on 17 April 1946. In 1949, after the 1948 Arab-Israeli War, Syria experienced a number of military coups and the rise of the Ba'ath Party. In 1958, Syria and Egypt were united by a political agreement into the United Arab Republic. The UAR lasted for three years, breaking apart in 1961 when a group of army officers seized power and declared Syria independent. A succession of coups ensued until, in 1963, a secretive military committee including Alawite officers Hafez al-Assad and Salah Jadid helped the Ba'ath Party seize power. In 1966 Alawite-affiliated military officers successfully rebelled and expelled the Ba'ath Party Old Guard followers of Greek Orthodox Christian Michel Aflak and Sunni Muslim Salah ad-Din al-Bitar, calling Zaki al-Arsuzi the Socrates of the reconstituted Ba'ath Party. In 1970 Air Force General Hafez al-Assad, an Alawite, took power and instigated a «corrective movement» in the Ba'ath Party. The coup of 1970 ended the political instability which had existed since independence. Robert D. Kaplan compared Hafez al-Assad's coming to power to an untouchable becoming Maharaja in India or a Jew becoming Tsar in Russia. An unprecedented development shocking to the Sunni majority population, which had monopolized power for so many centuries. In 1971, al Assad declared himself president of Syria, a position the constitution at the time permitted only for Sunni Muslims. In 1973, a new constitution was adopted, replacing Islam as the state religion with a mandate that the president's religion be Islam, and protests erupted. In 1974, to satisfy this constitutional requirement, Musa as Sadr, a leader of the Twelvers of Lebanon and founder of the Amal movement, who had unsuccessfully sought to unite Lebanese Alawites and Shiites under the Supreme Islamic Shiite Council, issued a fatwa that Alawites were a community of Twelver Shiite Muslims. Under the authoritarian, secular Assad government, religious minorities were tolerated more than before but political dissidents were not. In 1982, when the Muslim Brotherhood mounted an anti-government Islamist insurgency, Hafez Assad staged a military offensive against them known as the Hama Massacre. 
Topic: <inaudible> Syrian Civil War. During the Syrian Civil War, the Alawites have suffered as a result of their support for the Assad government against the mainly Sunni opposition, with up to a third of young Alawite men killed in the increasingly sectarian conflict. Many Alawites fear a negative outcome for the government in the conflict would result in an existential threat to their community. Topic: <laughs> Beliefs. Alawites and their beliefs have been described as secretive. Yaron Friedman, for example, in his scholarly work on the sect, has written that the Alawi religious material quoted in his book came only from public libraries and printed books since the sacred writings of the Alawi are kept secret. Some tenets of the faith are kept secret from most Alawi and known only to a select few. They have therefore been described as a mystical sect. Alawite beliefs have never been confirmed by their modern religious authorities. Alawites tend to conceal their beliefs due to historical persecution. Theology and practices Alawis are self-described as a community of true believers. Alawites celebrate Mass, including consecration of bread and wine. Alawite doctrine incorporates Islamic, Gnostic, Neoplatonic, Christian, and other elements and has, therefore, been described as syncretic. According to an article appeared on The Telegraph, the 1995 edition of the Oxford Encyclopedia of the Modern Islamic World allegedly describes them as extremist Shia whose religious system separates them from Sunni Muslims, but also states that they celebrate Mass, including consecration of bread and wine. Reincarnation Alawites hold that they were originally stars or divine lights that were cast out of heaven through disobedience and must undergo repeated reincarnation or metempsychosis before returning to heaven. They can be reincarnated as Christians or others through sin and as animals if they become infidels. In addition, they believe that God might have incarnated twice, the first incarnation was Joshua who conquered Canaan, and the second was the fourth caliph, Ali. Other beliefs Other beliefs and practices include, the consecration of wine in a secret form of mass performed only by males, frequently being given Christian names, entombing the dead in sarcophagi above ground, observing Khab Nisan Nauruz or Akitu, Epiphany, Christmas and the feast days of John Chrysostom and Mary Magdalene. The only religious structures they have are the shrines of tombs, the book Kitab al-Majmu, which is allegedly a central source of Alawite doctrine. They also believe in intercession of certain legendary saints such as Khidr Saint George and Simeon Stylites. Evolution <inaudible> 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 Yaron Friedman and many researchers of Alawi doctrine write that the founder of the religion, Ibn Nusayr, did not necessarily believe he was representative of a splinter, rebel group of the Shias, but rather believed he held the true doctrine of the Shias, and most of the aspects who are similar to Christianity are considered more a coincidence and not a direct influence from it, as well as other external doctrines who were actually popular among Shia esoteric groups in Basra in the 8th century. According to Friedman and other scholars, the Alawi movement started as many other mystical Gulat sects with an explicit concentration in an allegorical and esoteric meaning of the Quran and other mystical practices, and not as a pure syncretic sect, thought later they embraced some other practices as they believed all religions had the same baton core. Journalist Robert F. Wirth argues that the idea that the Alawi religion as a branch of Islam is a rewriting of history made necessary by the French colonialists' abandonment of the Alawi and departure from Syria. Wirth describes the first authentic source for outsiders about the religion written by Suleiman of Adana, a 19th-century Alawi convert to Christianity who broke his oath of secrecy on the religion explaining that the Alawi according to Suleiman deified Ali, venerated Christ, Muhammad, Plato, Socrates, and Aristotle, and held themselves apart from Muslims and Christians, whom they considered heretics. In 1936, six Alawi notables fearing persecution of their religion, petitioned the French colonialists not to merge their Alawi enclave with the rest of Syria 
Syria, insisting that the spirit of hatred and fanaticism embedded in the hearts of the Arab Muslims against everything that is non-Muslim has been perpetually nurtured by the Islamic religion. According to Wirth, later fatwas declaring Alawi to be part of the Shia community were by Shia clerics eager for Syrian patronage from Syria's Alawi president Hafez al-Assad who was eager for Islamic legitimacy in the face of the hostility of Syria's Muslim majority. Yaron Friedman does not suggest that Alawi did not consider themselves Muslims but does state that, the modern period has witnessed tremendous changes in the definition of the Alawis and the attitude towards them in the Muslim world. In order to end their long isolation, the name of the sect was changed in the 1920s from Nusayriya to Alawiya. By taking this step, leaders of the sect expressed not only their link to Shishism, but to Islam in general. According to Peter Theo Curtis, the Alawi religion underwent a process of sunification during the years under Hafez al-Assad's rule, so that Alawites became not Shia, but effectively Sunni. Public manifestation or even mentioning of any Alawite religious activities was banned, as was any Alawite religious organizations or any formation of a unified religious council or a higher Alawite religious authority. Sunni-style mosques were built in every Alawite village, and Alawi were encouraged to perform Hajj. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Opinions on position within Islam. The Sunni Grand Mufti of Jerusalem Haj Amin al-Husseini issued a fatwa recognizing them as part of the Muslim community in the interest of Arab nationalism, however, Athari Sunni scholars such as the Syrian historian Ibn Kathir have categorized Alawites as Kufar infidels and Mushrikeen polytheists. in their writings, with Ibn Taymiyyah arguably being the most virulent anti-Alawite in his fatwas accusing them of aiding the Crusader and Mongol enemies of the Muslims. Other Sunni scholars, such as al-Ghazali, also approved of violence against Alawites, whom he considered as non-Muslims. Benjamin Disraeli, in his novel Tancred, also expressed the view that Alawites are not Muslims. Historically, Twelver Shia scholars, such as Sheikh Tusi, didn't consider Alawites as Shia Muslims while condemning their heretical beliefs. Ibn Taymiyyah also pointed out that Alawites were not Shiites, according to Mahdi Musa. The Christian elements in the Nusayri religion are unmistakable. They include the concept of Trinity, the celebration of Christmas, the consecration of the Kurbana, that is, the sacrament of the flesh and blood which Christ offered to his disciples, and, most important, the celebration of the Kudas, a lengthy prayer proclaiming the divine attributes of Ali and the personification of all the biblical patriarchs from Adam to Simon Peter, founder of the Church, who is seen, paradoxically, as the embodiment of true Islam. Barry Rubin has suggested that Syrian leader Hafez al-Assad and his son and successor Bashar al-Assad pressed their fellow Alawites to behave like regular Muslims, shedding or at least concealing their distinctive aspects. During the early 1970s a booklet, Al-Alawiyan Shiatu al-Al-Bayt, The Alawites are followers of the household of the Prophet, was published, which was signed by numerous Alawi men of religion described the doctrines of the Imami Shia as Alawite. Additionally, there has been a recent movement to unite Alawism and the other branches of Twelver Islam through educational exchange programs in Syria and Qam. Some sources have discussed the sunification of Alawites under the al-Assad regime. Joshua Landis, director of the Center for Middle East Studies, writes that Hafiz al-Assad tried to turn Alawites into good read sunified Muslims in exchange for preserving a modicum of secularism and tolerance in society." On the other hand, al-Assad "...declared the Alawites to be nothing but Twelver Shiites." In a paper, "...Islamic Education in Syria," Landis wrote that, "...no mention." is made in Syrian textbooks controlled by the al-Assad regime of Alawites, Druze, Ismailis or Shia Islam. Islam was presented as a monolithic religion. Ali Suleiman al-Ahmad, chief judge of the Baathist Syrian state, has said, We are Alawi Muslims. Our book is the Quran. Our prophet is Muhammad. The Ka'bah Ba is our Qibla, and our Din religion is Islam. Population Topic Syria 
Alawites have traditionally lived in the coastal mountain range along the Mediterranean coast of Syria. Latakia and Tartus are the region's principal cities. They are also concentrated in the plains around Hama and Homs. Alawites also live in Syria's major cities, and are estimated at about 12% of the country's population 2.6 million, out of a total population of 22 million, there are four Alawite confederations, Kalbia, Kayatan, Hadadin, and Matawira, each divided into tribes based on their geographical origins or their main religious leader, such as Haidariya of Ali Haidar, and Kalajia of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Yunus from the village Kalazu near Antakya. Those Alawites are concentrated in the Latakia region of Syria, extending north to Antioch, Antakya, Turkey, and in and around Homs and Hama. Before 1953, Alawites held specifically reserved seats in the Syrian parliament, in common with all other religious communities. After that, including the 1960 census, there were only general Muslim and Christian categories, without mention of subgroups, to reduce sectarianism. Turkey To avoid confusion with the Alevis, the Alawites call themselves Arap Alavalari Arab Alevis, in Turkish. The term Nusayri, previously used in theological texts, has been revived in recent studies. In Kukurova, Alawites are known as Fela and Arabusaji although the latter is considered offensive by the Sunni population. A quasi-official name used during the 1930s by Turkish authorities was Eti Turkleri Hittite Turks, to conceal their Arabic origins. Although this term is obsolete, it is still used by some older people as a euphemism. The exact number of Alawites in Turkey is unknown. There were 700,000 in 1970, suggesting about 1,500,000 in 2009. As Muslims, they are not recorded separately from Sunnis. In the 1965 census, the last Turkish census where informants were asked their mother tongue, 700,000 people in the three provinces declared their mother tongue as Arabic. However, Arabic speaking Sunnis and Christians were also included in this figure. Turkish Alawites traditionally speak the same dialect of Levantine Arabic as Syrian Alawites. Arabic is preserved in rural communities and in Samandag. Younger people in the cities of Kukurova and Iskenderun tend to speak Turkish. The Turkish spoken by Alawites is distinguished by its accents and vocabulary. Knowledge of the Arabic alphabet is confined to religious leaders and men who have worked or studied in Arab countries. Alawites demonstrate considerable social mobility. Until the 1960s, they were bound to Sunni Agas landholders around Antakya and were poor. Alawites are prominent in the sectors of transportation and commerce and a large, professional middle class has emerged. Male exogamy has increased, particularly by those who attend universities or live in other parts of Turkey. These marriages are tolerated, however, female exogamy as in other patrilineal groups is discouraged. Alawites, like Alevis, have strong leftist political beliefs. However, some people in rural areas usually members of notable Alawite families may support secular, conservative parties such as the Democratic Party. Most Alawites feel oppressed by the policies of the Presidency of Religious Affairs in Turkey Dianet Isleri Baskinligi. Lebanon There are an estimated 40,000 Alawites in Lebanon, where they have lived since at least the 16th century. They are one of the 18 official Lebanese sects. Due to the efforts of their leader, Ali Eid, the Taif Agreement of 1989 gave them two reserved seats in parliament. Lebanese Alawites live primarily in the Jabal Mosin neighborhood of Tripoli and in ten villages in the Akar district, and are represented by the Arab Democratic Party. Their mufti is Sheikh Assad Asi. The Bab al tabane Jabal Mosin conflict between pro Syrian Alawites and anti Syrian Sunnis has affected Tripoli for decades. There are also about 3,900 Alawites living in the village of Gahar, which is located on the border between Lebanon and the Israeli occupied Golan Heights. In 1932, the residents of Gahar were given the option of choosing their nationality, and overwhelmingly chose to be a part of Syria, which has a sizable Alawite minority. Before the 1967 Arab-Israeli War, the residents of Gahar were counted in the 1960 Syrian census. Israel captured the Golan Heights from Syria, and after implementing Israeli civil law in 1981, the Alawite community chose to become Israeli citizens. <laughs> 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 
Topic: Language. Alawites in Syria speak a special dialect, part of Levantine Arabic, famous for the usage of letter kaf. Lots of terms such as qrd, Akkadian qar r adu means hero or powerful one. In the Ugaritic language, are still being used especially by rural Alawites. Due to foreign occupation of Syria, the same dialect is characterized by multiple borrowings, mainly from Turkish, then French, especially terms used for imported inventions such as television, radio, elevator, etc. Topic: <laughs> Genetics. A 2006 study concluded that Alawites of Adana regions had 33% of haplogroup R1b, 2% of haplogroup R1a, 1% of haplogroup TM184, which could probably link them to the Hurrians. Another study in 2009 founded that Alawites had 26.7% of haplogroup JM267. Topic: See also List of Alawites equals equals notes.